Good morning. Welcome to the United Presbyterian Church in Milford, Connecticut. Today is Sunday, July 12, 2020, and it's a beautiful day. Our prayer concerns this morning go out to June and Phil for their health, goes out to Sam for a job, and to our country for healing. Good morning, I'm Reverend Carlton Giles, stated supply pastor here at United Presbyterian Church. Let us turn our hearts to worship. Come, let us worship the Lord our God, for the Lord is our God, and we are the Lord's people. As we worship the Lord and as we wait upon the Lord, let us open our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all of your quickening powers, kindle a flame of sacred love in these cold hearts of ours. Lord, we worship you. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we've come to give you thanks and glory and praise for your name alone is worthy to receive our praise. We want to thank you for waking us up early this morning with our minds on you and a determination to go on to see what you have for us to do. We ask, O oh God, on this Sunday morning that you would bless us as we worship you in spirit and in truth, as we sing the songs of our faith and as we pray the prayers of the faithful, and as your word goes forward, O oh God, we ask that you would uh, enable us and empower us to do your will. In the name of him who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O word of God incarnate, O wisdom from on high, O truth unchanged, unchanging, O light of our dark sky, please join us in the morning's hymn, O word of God incarnate. to hear what would require change in us to be better disciples. 
Forgive the deliberate denseness of our minds and stubborn insistence that our way is the best way. We confess our sins and ask that you continue speaking to us until we hear and obey. Help us to do your will. Restore again the joy of knowing you. Make us new and lead us in the way of life everlasting. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. For if we confess our sins, Christ is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Went out of that house and set it by the lake, 
Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was gathering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it had not been much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell amongst thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, which produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives its joy. But since it has no root, they last only a short time. While trouble or persecution comes because of this word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling amongst the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but worries of his life and deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it fruitful unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what is sown. Thus ends the word of the Lord. The morning's message comes right out of the gospel reading this morning. Matthew chapter 13. Let anyone with ears listen. Let anyone with ears listen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. Matthew 13, the text for this morning, also set down in some variation in Mark chapter 4 and Luke chapter 8, record the first group of parables that Jesus spoke to the multitudes from a boat in the Sea of Galilee. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables. Just how many parables Jesus spoke on that day, we cannot know, but we are surely grateful for the evangelists who have recorded them for our own faith journey. These parables emphasize, among other things, the vast vitality of the kingdom of God. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. And reminding each and every listener, men and women, boys and girls, that anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Repeatedly, Jesus told his disciples to use their ears to really hear. Later on in Mark 4, you Bible readers might remember, after the warning about putting your lamp on a lampstand, we hear Jesus again say, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be giving, and you will receive even more. So it is, the same admonition to us this morning. Without question, Jesus is declaring that people are to be spiritual receiving stations, hearing and responding to the voice of God. Let anyone who has ears listen. God is trying to get through to you. God is trying to communicate with you. God is trying to tell you something. Sometimes he puts forth great effort. 
before we finally realize that he is speaking and we decide to listen. Let anyone with ears listen. A look at the ministry of Jesus reveals that he was a master of communication. He had both divine and human personality factors that influenced his message. Because Jesus knew the hearts of the people, he could focus his message to meet their needs using illustrations with which the people could really identify. No greater communicator has emerged than Jesus Christ. Using just a simple story of a sower, a farmer, scattering seed, Jesus illustrated the lives of his hearers. He said that the abundance of the harvest in their lives depended on the receptivity of the soil, their hearts. The people who hear the gospel are as varied as are the soils of Palestine. A farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath. The birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. And unfortunately, this is the way some people respond to Jesus Christ. There is a refusal to think about the gospel. There is a denial of the Christ of the gospel. There is a repudiation of the power of the gospel. There is a rejection of the veracity of the gospel. There are times when the gospel of Christ is presented to a person and he or she refuses to even let it enter into their minds and hearts. When such people close their minds, the gospel just can't penetrate. But this morning, I'm happy to report with you that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Let anyone with ears listen. There are times when people refuse the gospel message. And sometimes there is a failure to comprehend the gospel. Jesus said, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, you heard it this morning, then the evil one comes in and snatches away what was sown in their hearts. Such people may be able to grasp the meaning of the gospel intellectually, yet fail to see the importance of applying it to their own lives. Jesus said about others, some fell on rocky places. This was thin topsoil over rock. The seed would grow quickly, but when the plant could find no more nutrition, moisture, or room for the roots to grow, it would simply wither. The picture is that of a very thin layer of soil over a rocky ledge. The seed germinated quickly because it was near the surface, but then having no root, it quickly withered in the hot sun. The soil represents the shallow person who upon sudden impulse decides to be a Christian but has not counted the cost. This person, has no intention of loyalty to Jesus Christ in times of persecution. Quickly come, quickly go. Jesus bids those who would be his disciples, rather, to count the costs and to be willing to pay the costs. This is indicative of people that have an impulsive response to the gospel. Don't try to get any of the real meat of the gospel, always just the milk. Shallow! Topsoil believers, I mean soil, uh, can you get more out of your relationship with Jesus? 
more about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me, more about Jesus let me learn, more of his holy will discern, spirit of God my teacher be showing the things of Christ to me. Let me make my way to a study opportunity at the church or on Zoom or on conference call. Let me make my way to a small group learning exercise. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Let the Word of God dwell in me. Let anyone with ears listen. There are times when people refuse the gospel message, and sometimes there is a failure to understand the gospel, and sometimes there is the response from fascination. Many people follow Jesus simply out of fascination. When, when, when he would have a pop-up church service, here they would come from miles around. They enjoyed watching his miracles. They liked the stories he told. They liked being uh, among the in crowd. But they had no concept of what following Jesus as a disciple really meant. They were enthusiastic about his ministry, but not serious about following him when times got tough. They liked it when he turned water into wine, but had not a real concept of what it meant when Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Just a response from fascination. But when the real ministry happens, when church is over, after the benediction is given, when you have to get your hands dirty for the gospel's sake, when you have to improvise on how to reach the masses, let anyone who has ears listen. You can find people who will on occasion make a premature pledge. Once when Jesus and his disciples were walking along the road, a man came up to him and said, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus had to remind him, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus quenched the man's sudden enthusiasm, insisting that people consider the cost before deciding to follow him. He wanted people to see that discipleship means a groundbreaking, earth-shattering change of life. People often express a premature promise, but fail to follow Jesus wherever. He leads. Simply fascination. There are times when people refuse the gospel message. Sometimes there's the failure to understand the gospel. Sometimes there is the response from fascination. But Jesus went on in the text. Other seed, other seed fell among thorns. This ground was either already covered with thorns or filled maybe with latent weed seeds that would spring up and choke out the crop. Some people have a divided response. But I've come to remind you this early Sunday morning, this is an impossible impossibility. We can't have it both ways. Jesus taught that two crops cannot grow at the same time in the same place. On another occasion, he said, you cannot serve God and mammon. No one can serve Jesus Christ and the world at the same time. These are irreconcilable loyalties, oxymoronic devotions, contradictory commitments. This walk with Christ requires undivided allegiances. All to Jesus. I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. 
and in his presence daily live. The main problem of the weeds among the good seed was one of crop production. The weeds prevented good fruit. The worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Daily cares prohibit the harvest of the spirit in a Christian's life. It provides for the peril of duplicity. You all are worried about wearing a mask to church. I saw a meme recently that said that. You all are worried about wearing a mask to church when some of you have been doing it all the time. Let anyone with ears listen. Some seed fell on good ground. The good seed fell into the good ground that had been prepared for it. It germinated, it grew, and brought forth good fruit. This is the purpose both of seed and soil. God has made us in his own image. He has made us spiritual beings with the capacity for fellowship with him. He has done everything necessary to breach the barrier caused by our sins. He convicts of sin and invites us to salvation. And when one accepts the grace of God offered in Jesus Christ and is saved, it is as good seed sown in good ground. Jesus analyzed the best response of the hearers with the example of good ground. Still other seed fell on good soil. The soil received the seed and brought a healthy harvest. A harvest depends on an open reception. Jesus compared the person who opens his or her life to his message with good soil. This is the person who hears the message of Jesus Christ, understands its importance and opens his or her life to Jesus. But that's just a harvest. For an abundant harvest, it depends on a continued reception. One becomes a Christian in the miracle of a moment. Therefore, Paul writes about it, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old has gone, the new is here. But it takes a lifetime of openness to the Lord Christ to produce an abundant harvest. It's what the hymn writer was describing. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow with endless praise. Our capacity to receive is determined by our listening. If a student enrolls in a class and for some reason quits paying attention as the teacher speaks, then the time will come when the student will not be able to understand what the teacher is saying. We develop our capacity to hear and to receive what we hear. And Jesus cautions, take heed therefore how you hear. Hearing is important. The skill set of the sower, not in question. The quality of the seed, not in question. Jesus says imperatively, if you have ears to listen, use them. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Jesus declared that we are spiritual receiving stations. We have the capacity to receive communication from God. If we just pay attention, if we just listen, concentrate on what God is trying to communicate. Jesus gave his disciples the same command. Anyone with ears, let him hear. How well do you hear? Let anyone with ears listen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all of your bountiful blessings. There are so many prayer concerns that have been lifted this morning, some whose names we can call June and Phil 
and others, and some names we do not know to call, but, O oh Lord, you know. And we ask, O oh God, for your many blessings upon those who are sick and afflicted, those who are bereaved. We ask for your comfort, for you are indeed the God of all comfort. We thank you for food that has been on our table, for clothes in our closet, for the activity of our limbs, for the articulation of our speech, and we thank you, gracious God, that things are as well as they are with us. Continue to bless us, O oh God, that we might be hearers and doers of your word, that we will use our ears to hear and to listen what you say to us and what you say to your church. We thank you for pastors and believers everywhere who continue to hold up and represent and have allegiance to the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. Even in these uncertain times, we ask, O oh God, that you pray for leaders in our country, in our state, and in our cities, that they may be led in a godly way to find justice and have a moral compass as they lead. Forgive us, O oh God, for all the sins we've done against you and against your word, and try us one more time. We ask this prayer and all prayers in the name of him who is, has a name above every name, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The morning's closing hymn is hymn number 329, Break Thou the Bread of Life. forth and even forevermore.